Hello, I'm Rania Badr, English lead teacher at Alain Cycle 3 School in Alain. If as an educator, you're looking for a revolutionary, exciting tool to present your lessons, then join me in a quick tour exploring Microsoft Sway. Sway is such a, a contemporary platform that can encompass all other links and media in one spot. It's a totally free app, which can be found with other Microsoft apps, or just type sway.office.com and, and log in with your Microsoft account. Sway can be used for a variety of purposes like reports, portfolio, your private storyline, and much more. Most importantly, as an educator, it can be used to present exciting lessons, especially in distance learning. You might wonder, how is it different from PowerPoint? Actually, it's just another sibling of the Microsoft family. Both PowerPoint and Sway can create content beyond just presentations. However, PowerPoint is better for offline usage with a presenter leading or for a presentation including printouts that are featuring static media such as charts and graphs. Whereas with Sway, it is a free online app if you're looking for a more exciting platform, then Sway would be great for you. It is better suited to integrate online content, just like Microsoft Forms, Padlets, name it, and any other link. Sway can be used to create interactive presentations and content that don't need a presenter. So if you're presenting online, face-to-face -face classes, or you're assigning asynchronous activities, Sway can suit you perfectly. It works well with both image-heavy and text-heavy content. You can upload as many videos, links from YouTube. Think of Sway as more excitable sibling of PowerPoint. Excited about Sway? OK, let's look at a sample of how it works in class. Of course, you're going to build your lesson the way you always do with the different parts, but this is how it looks. It's not static image. And just like the experience of a website, you're scrolling around. You can introduce your learning outcomes, put a do now or a brainstorm to start your lesson. And for the purpose of this lesson, I had them watch a video and answer directly on the form. What's great about Sway is that students can just complete the Microsoft form without the need to move from one platform to the other, and they just submit and it's done for them. Of course, you can upload as many images and we will explore how to display the images. We've got images with different captions and students having the link, they can click and explore the images by themselves at their own pace. Media like texts, videos, audios, all could be included. And another very important feature that I've been using recently is integrating the Padlet into my Sway as well, where students can do collaborative work online. And this is actually one of the products of my classes, which I'm very proud of. Now, another thing is using it to join the Nearpod. And actually, with the Nearpod, you can either click on the link to take you to the Nearpod or you can even upload the Sway itself in the Nearpod presentation. So it works both sides. As it is just a link and students can access it from any device, mobile phone, iPads, or computers, you can upload some extension activities to be done later on, put a pool of resources like videos, audios, readings, and assign some extension activity for students to do on the, at their own pace. After looking at this lesson, let's see how it works. Is it simple? Yes, it's very simple. Actually, it does a lot of the work for you. Now, if you're new to Sway, follow these simple guidelines to get started. Logging on Sway for the first time, you will have three starting points. Either create new, start from a topic, or start from a document, which could be anything from Word, PowerPoint, or PDF, then you start formatting. They have a big pool of ideas to get you inspired, so I would advise you to go and get inspired with some of the ready-made sways, then start creating your own. 
It's worth noting here that there are some good tutorials as well that will help you on your journey into Sway, which is actually a very user-friendly program. Let's start and see. With creating new, it will open for you a new card, okay, or a new file. And with the Sway, we don't add slides, but rather we add cards. Each card had some limited options and some people think or might view these options as limited. However, for me, it's very user friendly and saves a lot of time because I really don't like to have a lot of options and get meticulous about choosing fonts and colors. Suede just does the right thing for me. You have three main options, text, which is heading or text. And then you've got media, and this is the variety of media, image, video, audio, and most importantly is the embed option where you can embed a Padlet or a Microsoft, which we'll see later, and then upload your own files. The last thing for, from the options available are the way you group your images or you group your media. Fine, let's get the job done. I wanna add a title or a heading for my lesson here and I'll just copy paste it from my textbook and this will be the heading. Now, one thing is great about Sway is they suggest for you if you are going to drag an image or a video, they will have some suggestions for you available. If you're happy with the suggestions, you can go for one or you can just choose from your own device, YouTube, or wherever you have your images stored. Let's get it easy for ourselves and just add one of the options they have suggested. So here we've got our title card and with the title card, we've got few of the options. We've got either to emphasize the title and it will look here as if it is bold, but when we go to play it, you will see that it might give it a color or change the font according to the style you are choosing. You can make it accent, add a link, or also add a focus point on the image that you have chosen. So when there is an animation or, mo or motion on the picture, this will be your focus. Let's go on and add a heading. And let's say we're adding our learning objectives or our vault. Okay, I'm choosing here to copy two of the reading learning outcomes from the teacher's guide. And just will add them into text. Make sure to add a heading and then text because it will look much better. So just modify a little and here you go. Again, you can have emphasis, accent, add bullets or numbers. And then this, these are very useful to um, adjust the size of the card on the presentation later on. So from there, let's add a do now. For every section of my class, I, write, I like to add a heading so it is clear for the student and I will show you how to navigate through later. Now with the do now, I want to embed media, which is a form that I've created for this lesson. So I'll go to the Microsoft form, copy the link for the form I want as an embed. So click on the share, make sure that you choose the embed and copy it. This code is ready to you and you can just paste it onto this way. Here it is. And remember, this is how it looks in the making. It's not how the students will view it. Let's add another heading for, let's say, the vocabulary. So the new vocabulary, I want to add an image and I want it grouped add as a stack. So let's try to add some text first, looking at 
the new vocabulary from the teacher's guide for this lesson. Every time you want to add a card, just add plus, choose text or image, and you will see here it's surrounded with a gray border. That means it's grouped as one group at the end. One more word. So add a third word. And here we go. Fine. Now, I just wa don't want to do any formatting here. I will keep it as it is. But I want to add a new stack. OK, so to add pictures of, we've got images. Let's see images for code. So because I'm looking for Morse code, you can drag the image or just add title, add another image. And this time I'm looking for network. So let's add it. Now, if you look here, it's by mistake was put in the wrong place. So I'll just drag it and keep clicking and drag it into to the place you want. And for here, I want to add telegram, a picture or an image of a telegram. Okay, search and We've got an image of a telegram just here. So here are my heading or the title of the um, story. First heading, do now, which is a Microsoft form. And then I look at the Microsoft form. I don't want it uh, an icon, but I want it actually a big size for students to choose so maximizing it and then for the stack we've got them grouped and I want to change the grouping type for this images instead of this is the one chosen for the group type we have either automatic stack grid slideshow which has three options and I like this one we'll put it a medium size and this one as well as a medium size. Fine. So let's look at how this looks for the students. OK, as you can see, the font is totally different because the style or the design is automatically chosen and remixed by uh, Sway. If you're happy about it, keep it. If not, we'll just see how to edit that. We've got our Walt. We've got our Do Now. and perfectly displayed form where students can scroll down using this sidebar until they submit. We've got our vocabulary displayed as a stack and the images displayed as a grid or a slideshow. Fine. Now, if I'm not happy about anything, I'll go back and edit, and it automatically saves any changes. You can undo it using Control Z if you want to undo anything. So I don't want it so big. I want them small, so I will change the size of this. You can change the size of this one as well. So change the size of this group to keep it together. Then going to the design now. If I'm not happy about the design, the font, and the background, OK, I can go to the design from the storyline, move to the design, choose style. You have two important things to do. The style of the um, scrolling, so was it whether it is scroll vertically, horizontally, or slides. And for this one, I'm choosing, I've chosen horizontally. Let's move to vertically to see how it is. This is the suggested design. And you have a pool of other design options to choose from. Let's choose this one and see how it works. Now, with the design, you will notice it changes the background colors with the fonts. You might see this as a limitation, but for me, it is very 
good option where it saves my time. So here is my updates. Then, and this is how it looks. Remember, we have it now vertically. So I'm scrolling down the sidebar and here how the new design looks like. I've got the size changing for the vocabulary so it is side by side next to the images. And if you want to guide the students as to where to go on the uh, sway, you have each heading with the content underneath it. So we've got one, two, and three sections. Each section is a heading by itself. Fine, now the last thing, how do we share? So use the sharing option to copy the link. You've got three specifics, either specific people or groups, and then you will have to type their emails, those in your organization with the link, and this I choose when I share with teachers, Anyone with the link is my best option for sharing with students if in case they are using their mobiles or they are not logged on their account, they can still access it. Now we've got to choose whether audience can view or edit. I always do the view because edit means they are allowed to change in my presentation itself. And then you've got to just copy it and it is copied for you, paste it anywhere. You might explore the other ones, but get embed code is a very good option as well to use in some platforms. Fine. So share it and here it goes. This is how they will view it. I hope that this presentation was useful for you. I hope you get excited using Sway. Thank you for following the presentation till the end and goodbye.